beautifuls. So, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back from, from womb retreat. I'm back from Sexpo. I'm back. And yeah, I'm just coming on to say hi and <laughs> to also address something that's been coming up for, that comes up for a lot of my clients. Um, and it's also been in me. So yeah, let's talk about that. And the thing is, is about the fear of fucking things up, right? So if you have this fear, if you know that you are consistently trying to get things right or not fuck things up, then let me know, like give me a comment below, give me some hearts and if this resonates for you, if you feel this fear that comes up and, and somehow it stops you from being your full expression, um, let me know because I feel like I feel like one of the things that's really helped me in this, because I've had this and it still plays out at times at different in different levels, um, is actually speaking to other people, speaking to my clients um, and hearing from them that they have this, that they have this fear of, of not getting things right, of saying the wrong thing, of, of failing, of fucking things up, all this kind of stuff. And it plays out in all areas of life. So the thing that has really inspired me to come on and share this today is that I was speaking to a man earlier and he was berating himself, like like almost annihilating himself consistently up in his head about, I shouldn't have done this, I should have done that. Um, if I'd done things differently in my life, then maybe I'd be there. I don't even know if my like purpose, I'm not even living my purpose. Like I'm not, why am I not here yet? Um, you know, I shouldn't have, I, I tried not to be a bastard. And then, you know, and then I got walked over. And then, you know, some of the things were about not feeling acknowledged um, and then being cut down. And one of the things I said to him was, well, where are you acknowledging yourself? Um, are you acknowledging yourself? And he said to me, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how to acknowledge myself. Um, and I said, are you, can you see that you're constantly cutting yourself down? Like constantly. And he was like, yeah, like I can see that. And so, and then there was this kind of this drive of like, I have to know everything. I have to understand everything. I have to like, why is this happening to me? Why does that happen? Why do people do this? Why did this? Why did that? Why did da 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 And it was this constant search for understanding, for meaning, and in the process, cutting down himself wherever he wasn't good enough, right? So my question to you is, you know, where are you cutting yourself down and not acknowledging yourself? And, you know, there's these, it's like a, we have this monkey mind that drives us freaking nuts. Like who else is driven nuts by their monkey mind that consistently is analyzing things and, and trying to find answers for things and trying to make meaning of things, right? And so one thing that we spoke to was the longing for connection and intimacy and sexual exploration and all this kind of stuff. And I... My question was, was, well, are you giving any of that to yourself? Where are you giving yourself your own sexual exploration, you know, um, and giving that love like that you're wanting to give out? Where are you? Are you giving that love to yourself? Because as soon as you start looking for someone to give to, for someone to explore sexually with, um, you have to check in with yourself and see, is this coming from a place of lack? Like, am I wanting to do that because it's fulfilling something that I don't have? Or is it from a place of, I have this amazing sexual self-loving relationship with me and I want to share that with someone, right? And because if you go the first way, you're not probably going to attract a healthier relationship. You're probably going to attract what I call a wound mate. And you're contracting that because that person is fulfilling a void that you haven't filled up yet. And then you're going to be relying on them to keep meeting those needs. So you have to, have to, have to 
have this epic relationship with you first. And this means recognizing all the ways that you are cutting yourself down, all the ways that you are not enoughing, all the ways that you're not acknowledging, right? You have to fill yourself up. This is so vital. And in that process, one of the conversations that we spoke to, one of the things we spoke to was, well, I'm trying to find this purpose. I should be living my purpose. And I said to him, what if, what if your purpose is to love yourself? What if your purpose is loving, loving yourself and then from that place, then your purpose will naturally just show up? From that place, something will come that is your magic. Instead of trying to find what you think you should be doing or how you think you should be doing things, what if in the process of making your purpose loving yourself, that your actual purpose came through with, with effortlessness, right? And so this is some of the things to, to reflect on. And I think the other piece to that is the importance of, of self-compassion, right? And I think there's this kind of piece that I'm seeing in the collective consciousness of let's work on ourselves. So con this constant kind of, I need to work on myself. I need to work on myself. I see that. Oh, I'm fucked up in that. I need to go work on that. I'm fucked up in that area. I'm not doing this properly. I need to work on myself. I need to heal myself. I need to do that. I need to do more meditation. I need to do more affirmations. I need to go and get that healing session. I need to go to this workshop. I need da, 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 da. The, And it's all coming from this place of like, that there's something wrong with me, right? Constantly like, oh, there's something wrong with me that I need to fix. And, you know, we want these big, intensive healing experiences, which, you know, have their value. I'm a, I'm, I'm a healer, so I know, and I do workshops, and I, and I teach workshops. But there's this piece in there that I think there's this gentle softness that's wanting to come through, right? This piece of, of just holding yourself and just giving yourself the things that you long for, you know, and... and getting I guess coming from this place of what is it that I long for and how can I meet this in me right and you may need support with that you may need help right so yeah and so from this place right and this is what happens from this place of self-compassion of building this emotional bank balance Matt Khan talks about this is that this is where you raise your vibration right so then all the things that you're actually longing for will naturally show up because you're not trying to find them from a place of, I don't have that. You're coming from a place of, of I'm enough as I am. I don't have to get things right and I'm giving myself full permission to fuck things up. I'm gonna give myself full permission to go into this. And this is another piece too, and I'll come back, <laughs> is one of the ways that I'm finding that's helped me to to heal the things that I'm afraid of fucking up is to actually fuck things up and to actually go into it and to own it and to be like, yeah, I fucked up, you know, and that's okay because I'm human, right? And I can choose differently next time and maybe I won't choose differently, right? Maybe I won't choose differently and that's okay too, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, like me berating myself or shaming myself is actually going to put me in a shame cycle, where I'm probably going to end up doing that thing because actually I've, I'm, I'm, there's shame there. So it's about bringing it into the light and, and embracing that, right? Embracing, embracing our fucked upness ultimately. And I had a conversation with a friend recently and she's like something and she said something back, oh, that's fucked. And I'm like, yeah, we're all pretty fucked. We're all pretty fucked up. We just got to own it, right? We just got to own, own. And, and ultimately I feel like this this wrongness that so many of us feel, this wrong, this inner wrongness, is like we, like I feel like all of us have it, right? We all own. There's a piece of this not wanting to to be wrong because we want to be worthy, and you know that that somehow rightness makes us worthy. And you know, I put the question out there: What if there is no right or wrong? What if it do, doesn't exist? Then do we give ourselves full permission to be whatever expression wants to come through? whatever that is, right? So what's the impossible if there's no right or wrong? What's the impossible? So I want to go back to what I was saying before about the self-compassion and building the emotional bank balance is that, and this is one of the things that I suggested, uh, that I suggest to a lot of my clients, it's really simple, like it's so easy, it's like really super simple, but the more you do it, the more that you 
you build this emotional bank balance to then what happens is that you no longer want to do the things that you're trying to stop yourself from doing so it's like if you're doing things and you're like I shouldn't be doing that or that's wrong or that's bad or that's not that's not conscious oh, I shouldn't do that it's not conscious or it's not spiritual or this like like how many rules are we putting ourselves are we putting on ourselves for what we should and shouldn't be doing even in this consciousness right but, and then the question is is it really conscious if we're telling ourselves we have to do it to be conscious right <laughs> we could get deep into this but like there's so many rules that we put on ourselves of how we should show up. So what if you just showed up in your shit, if you, in your unconsciousness, and, and you loved it, in your shadow, or a little dark light, whatever. Like, what if you just showed up in all of it and loved all of it? Is that being conscious? You know? <laughs> um, but so for, for, for me, it's like show up however that looks and, and notice how you feel about it and instead of shooting yourself, come to your heart and build that emotional bank balance by acknowledging the feeling that's there, whether it's, the, whether it's anger, upset or sadness or disappointment and, and giving, being your own parent and telling yourself that it's okay. It's okay that you fucked up. It's okay to get things wrong or it's, you're safe. I'm here for you. And this is really simple, right? It's so simple. Um, but it's about coming into the body as well. It's like coming into the, out of that mind, right? That's telling you what you should or shouldn't do or how you need to show up to be loved, to be approved of and coming back into you're okay just as you are, right? Even if that person over there doesn't like you or hates you or is triggered by you, like that's their stuff, right? And you just showing up. Like if you, if you didn't care about what anyone thought, how would you show up? If you didn't care, how would you show up? Mm. So, so coming back to the body, yeah, like touch is really grounding. I usually come to my heart and my breathing, and the breathing is to help to get out of the the over the crazy mind that is 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 criticizing yourself, and to come back to reassuring yourself, you know, that you are enough, and you know how you how you're showing up, human. You're just human as fuck, basically. <laughs> and knowing that you're doing the best thing that you can and with, with what you have and the knowledge that you have. and mm. So that's the first piece. It's just this piece, this simple piece of self-compassion. Um, and it takes practice. You just want to keep practicing this, this self-compassion. And, um, and the acknowledgement, acknowledgement of self. And the other thing is, is... Um, if there's anger sitting there, if there's anger, which usually there is, <laughs> um, if you, especially if you're criticizing or annihilating or berating yourself, is that that anger needs to be expressed. It's like the body is saying, like, like underneath this, this, this shame is this anger and this rage and like um, this conversation with this man, he was like, life is just so fucked up and like, <laughs> and it was like, um, almost to the, to the kind of like why like why is it so fucked up that we have all these thoughts like <laughs> and and there was this kind of like um i felt like the anger was towards um what was it it's like why are we built this way why are we made this way to overthink and all this kind of stuff um and so my advice was to really go into that and and to write out and journal on all the things that that you're angry for, that you're resentful about, that you want to project onto other people, like write that all out and then get a pillow and prop that, all that on the pillow and maybe you want to call it life or maybe it's a per certain person. You want to do that and to actually go into that anger and to to fully express that anger onto that pillow, onto that thing and and yeah like getting it all out whatever wants to be and giving yourself full permission to go there right because this is why you're all up in your head because underneath it's like this not wanting to be in the body it's like i don't want to it's, it's like all this anger and this stuff is inside me in my body and this shame is in my body and i don't want to feel it because that's painful so instead i'm going to be all up in my head over analyzing what this is about but the, the medicine to this all is to actually be out of the head and in the body which requires 
you to feel. So that it's kind of the thing. It's like the anger about always being in the head, right? Actually needs to be needs to be expressed through the body, right? So if you find yourself like getting it, berating yourself for always being up in your head, <laughs> um, it's 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 showing you that it's time to to express from the body. So this means things like punching up, like using your throat, voicing, swearing, jumping up and down, like all the things that you probably shut down as a child, like getting that out. Um, punching, yeah, I said punching pillows, screaming into pillow, p pillows, thrusting pillows, all of this kind of stuff is to be, needs to come out and it's not just going to be a one-time thing, like this is years, right, years of, of shaming <laughs> and wrongness, it's like a, a lifetime and so this is where the peace needs to come through of like actually owning that and finding the, the love of the anger, find the love of that expression, finding like, you know, the joy in that because on the other side of that, that expression is the joy, is the bliss, is the orgasm, because <laughs> um, everything in your body is 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 not. Every time you're shutting down that kind of emotion and like trying to understand it in your mind, you're blocking the pleasure that's also held in the body. And that was the other piece that came through was around self pleasure and and becoming our own lover, and and instead of looking for, I want to give to someone, I want to I want to give someone my love. And I want to be someone's lover. It's actually about, you know, what are you being your own lover first? Are you touching your hand in a way and honoring and worshiping your, like starting with your hand? Are you worshiping yourself? And if you're not, well, you can't worship someone else. You've, you've got to, and you, because sometimes that might be coming from a place of approval. And, and how often are you with a lover or a partner or anyone? In relationship and trying to get things right right mm, yeah Alistair release is so important I haven't really been what, reading your comments yeah thank you everyone for commenting I'm glad that you're receiving this so just to just to recap on the, the tools that I've shared is the self-compassion really simple practice coming to the body touching the body Breathing in, giving yourself the words that you long to hear from someone else. You know, anything that you're wanting to someone else to say to you is actually what you need to say to yourself. And the brain actually can't tell the difference between someone else's words and your words. Um, and any complaints that you're having about other people is to turn them around and to say, well, where am I doing this with me? you know, not being acknowledged, well, not being appreciated, well, where are you not doing that for yourself? And as soon as you start to do it for you, I can guarantee you that suddenly people are going to show up and start seeing you and appreciating you, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and then that, that feeling the anger and, and expressing the anger and those in that healthy way. So yeah, that's all I had to say. I really had, didn't, you know, just felt like this needed to come out. And this is some of the stuff that I actually share in my book. Like these are some of the tools that are going to be in my book. So um, I'll put my little link up there. Um, it's not, it's, it's so close to being finished. I know I've said this for like the last month, <laughs> but it really is this time. It really is. Um, but I'm being compassionate on myself for that and not putting pressure because when I was putting pressure on myself to finish my book, it felt like work and it felt like it wasn't, it wasn't flowing. And then as soon as I dropped the story of needing to have it done, it was like suddenly like all the magic came through and yeah yep and then like that's how it works as soon as you stop shooting and berating yourself and trying to get things right then you you allow the magic to naturally come through um so if you're out there and you're like oh what's my purpose what's my purpose right now i'm going to tell you your purpose right now is to love yourself and to stop trying to get things right and stop trying to do what other you think you should do or what people telling you to do it's like actually just love yourself and the answer will come it will come yeah all right so um yeah so if you guys want to um pre-copy or first release copy of my book which will be discounted it's tinyurl.com slash heal love book um and then you just put your email in and then when the first release comes out you'll get an email to purchase it as well um yeah, so I hope you enjoyed my live stream and got something really beautiful out of it. Even if you just incorporate one of those things, I promise it'll make start making such a difference. 
Um, I think, you know, sometimes it's about just bringing it back to basics, the gentle, soft, self-love and self-compassion um, can actually change our lives. So it's what happened for me and it's how I gave up so many ways that I wasn't loving myself and transformed my life. Anyway, loves, I'm going to go now. Thank you for listening. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you for being here and listening to my message. Um, yeah, until next time. Much love. Bye.